Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Bondus Podcast. I'm so happy that you're here. I love you guys so much. Seriously, spending your Mondays with me it makes me feel so special. And I'm so excited to have my two guests here. Well, one guest and Tyler. Tyler's always here. Hello. Yeah, Tyler lives here. But hey guys. It's She's Zoe. back. I'm back for another episode. And today, guys, we're going to talk skincare hot takes because I have a lot of hot takes. And, you know, that's okay. And you know what? I used to take my hot hot cakes, <laughs> my hot takes to social media more. And people are mean, okay? It's a scary place on the internet. I get like, people are like, you're not a dermatologist. You wash faces for a living. Like, you don't know anything. And I take offense to that because I don't wash faces. Zoe does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm also a licensed esthetician. But I think definitely since you started posting on TikTok more, too, people on TikTok are a lot more ruthless than they are on Instagram. And if you're not a dermatologist, they literally think you're like a troll that lives yeah. under a bridge and knows literally nothing about skin or skincare. Like, And I think that's the hard thing that estheticians deal with. And like, yes, I'm not a doctor. Dermatologists have their place. There are amazing dermatologists that are so talented, so gifted, like that I look up to and love. But also I think there's, you know, it's estheticians also have a place like we know a lot more about the skin than a lot of derms they literally are just like freezing off cancerous moles and that's amazing and great but they're not really treating hyperpigmentation and treating the root cause of acne holistically and really working on the function of the skin they're just prescribing topical ingredients and you know medications to be a band-aid and like yes I'm sure it works great for some but there's just a place for both. And there's two approaches. Like there are clients that listen, like for them realistically and financially being on a thousand dollar, $600 skincare regimen and doing it every single day is not feasible for them. They don't have the time. They don't want to do it. Or, you know, obviously insurance doesn't cover it. So I understand there are those times where people need their insurance to cover it and they want a topical cream and they want to put on one cream and you know, that's what they want to do. But for those that want another option and want to do it more holistically and actually make changes in their skin long term, estheticians are great for that, you know, to really maintain the skin and control the acne because we know acne is not cured. It's maintained. It's controlled. We keep it under bay. When you have acne prone skin, it's like a lion in a lion's cage that's just waiting to be woken up. And if you keep that lion fed and you're sweet to it and you do all the right things, that lion will stay asleep. So that's one of the hardest things I think being on TikTok now is that people are so like derm heavy. Oh, yeah. And anytime I post anything, they're like tagging all of these like TikTok famous dermatologists. Like, is this true? And it's like kind of, and I get it. Right. But like, just because I don't have, I'm not Dr. Boda doesn't mean that I don't know anything. Yeah. And I actually had a client once who for some reason thought I was a doctor and she came in. She was like, I oh, you're a lot of people do. And they're like Dr. Boda. And I was like, oh no, no, I'm not a doctor. And she was like, oh, I'm leaving. And I was like, okay. Did she leave? Yeah. Oh so this was like really early in my career. Wait, I was very what? confused. Yeah. But you should have been like, yes, ma'am. This no, is she. Uh, no, I'm no, never going to give a false identity. Obviously, obviously. Pretty sure that's illegal. I'm, I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't impersonate a doctor. <laughs> Don't lie and say that you're a doctor. No, no, no. I know. And like sometimes I'm like, sometimes like, you know, when I go through like my spiral that y'all know I go through where I'm like, I'm going to buy a lot and buy a dog. Like, I've thought about just going and becoming a dermatologist on my free time and just, you know, going she through med school. You thought about that? Yeah, a couple of times, actually, so people could stop. And then, like, one time, like, when I got out of this, my car, this says wear SPF on the back, and I was going to the zoo, this person pulled up, and they're like, oh, my God, I love your license plate. Like, I'm a dermatologist. Are you a dermatologist? And I was like, no, I'm an esthetician. He was like, oh, and then drove away, and I was like, okay. And it like hurt my feelings, yeah. you know, and I was like sad the whole time I was at the zoo. I'm like, I'm trying to enjoy the pandas and like now I'm sad. Like, So there's like a divide in the community. Yeah, there for is. sure. And I think, you know, I and I, okay, I think this with everything. There are great estheticians and there are some shit estheticians, okay? There are some great derms. There are some shit derms. There's great artists. There's awful artists. There's great musicians, bad musicians. Like every industry, there's good and bad, right? Yeah. I don't think all derms are awful. I don't think all estheticians are great. They're definitely, you know are some derms that get kickbacks and are really heavy on pill pushing. And we've all experienced that. Tyler's experienced it. I've experienced it. You've experienced it where you've gone to a dermatologist's office and they walk in and they look at you for two seconds and they're like, here's this prescription and walk away and they don't give you that personalized care. Yeah. 
For some people, they love that. They're quick, they're busy, their life. I mean, it's just, it's truly what the patient wants, right? But I think for the longest time, people just thought, if you had a skin concern, you have to go to a dermatologist and that is the mm-hmm. only option and that is what you do and that there are no other ways to treat your skin. There's no one else to help you and that's where estheticians come in. And as the industry has evolved, estheticians aren't just doing waxing, which is, and I want to preface there, every part of the aesthetics industry is so special, so amazing, so wonderful. But I think when people used to think about estheticians as a whole, and I was this way too, you think of more of the fluffy facials at like a spa when you're going to a resort. You're thinking about just like cucumbers on the eyes and face mask and body waxing and lash extensions and brow waxes. You're not thinking, oh, estheticians can use a laser on my face. They can microneedle me. They can give me medical grade skincare. When I was struggling with my own skin and I was going to med spas and things, I never asked like what the person was that was doing my skin. I assumed they were like a nurse or a doctor because they're wearing scrubs, you know? (laughs) And I just never asked. And then when I found out, like that's what really sparked my interest in the industry. I was like, holy shit, like you're an esthetician and you're using a laser on me. Like, that's so cool. Like, I didn't know you could do that. Like you can literally needle my face and you're an esthetician. That's amazing, you know? And that's when I was like, oh my God, like I can treat the things that I struggle with in my skin and I don't have to go to college, like slay. <laughs> like that's <laughs> like fucking go to amazing. Medical school, yeah, and go to medical school for so so many years. Yes. And it's a trade, you guys. At the end of the day, it's a skill that you're learning. It's you're learning how to treat skin, right? And you're under medical delegation, so that's how I'm able to do a lot of advanced things. I have a medical director who oversees me, approves everything I do, all of that jazz. But when a lot of people it, now with social media and TikTok and things like this, people are finding out more about the medical side of aesthetics and the more medical side of services. And that's the really cool thing about it. There's no like license that makes you a medical esthetician. It's more of the services that you perform. So if you're performing like microneedling and deep chemical peels and lasers, you're working in a med spa, which is doing more medical based procedures. And then if you're an esthetician that's doing more like hydrofacials and, and you're doing like more relaxing facials, working with more like eminence and image and like things like that. You're more just an esthetician. That's what we all are, just estheticians, regular esthetician. That's amazing too. But there are two different sides of the industry and a lot of people like the day spa. Sometimes, honestly, I miss it. It's so relaxing, massaging other people with the steamer on and like, and that is self-care too. You know, you're really calming people down getting, moving their facial lymph nodes and massage is such a powerful healing tool. Touch in general in the aesthetics industry is you're interchanging energy with your patients at that time, right? And both sides are lovely, but I think where the divide comes from is when people think estheticians, they just think waxing, lashes, foo-foo facials. They don't think, wow, estheticians can actually treat a variety of skin concerns. Like they can remove a skin tag. They can get rid of milia. They can do all these things, right? And so anyways, long story long, um, being on TikTok, people are mean because I'm not a doctor. And they literally the other day, someone was like, you don't know anything because you just wash faces all day. And I'm like, "Okay, I do more than that. Like if you go to my Instagram and see like I'm changing lives. okay? and no, I don't have a doctorate. No, I'm not a doctor, but I can treat skin and I don't feel like I need to prove myself, you know, and as estheticians, if you're listening to this and like you feel that with your patients, like why are they going to trust me? I'm not a doctor. It's hard, but before and afters and practice and the longer you do it, the better you get and the right people will come to you. If you're getting clients coming in that are like skeptical of you, like you don't even want them. Like I'm not going to try to sit here and convince you that I can do my job. Like that's like the most offensive thing to me. It's like if you are here, like it's because you trust me. Like I'm not here poaching you with ads and things like that. Like I didn't put a gun to your head and drag you to my treatment room. Like if you don't want to be here, you don't have to be here. You know, like if you're here, you need to trust me Mm -hmm. and trust goes a long way throughout the entire process. Like I'm here to help you, but I'm not going to force you to trust me. You know, that has to just be established from the get go. It's like being in a relationship with someone. Yeah. Trusting them. 100%. But what got me, my ass chewed up guys on TikTok I didn't even know that my comments were that bad because, okay, my TikToks, when I first started, they started, like, I got a lot of views and then something happened and now, like, I don't get as many views, whatever. TikTok's annoying. But this one, like, did really good and I had no idea because I usually get, like, four or five comments, but it ended up having, like, 800 and Zoe actually called me and she was like, have you seen the comments? And I'm like, it was a sweet little video about just cleansing your skin in the morning and that everyone should cleanse their skin in the morning. 
And apparently it really divided the community on TikTok. It was very controversial. Uh, yeah. That morning you had posted it. I think it was that same morning. And I had checked TikTok and it showed up. And I was like, oh, I was like, this video is doing well. I was like, let me see some of the comments. And people were like, you don't know shit. You don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. And people were just like, I would say it was about 50-50. Like where some people were like, no, slay, like period. 80-20. Like, no, no. There was like, there were some people that were kind of in the middle. And then because some people were just genuinely confused. Like I've seen some people say that you should double cleanse or cleanse your skin in the morning. And then some people say that you don't. Like I just don't know. And people were, some people were just confused and didn't mm -hmm. know. And then other people were like, you stupid bitch. You don't know shit. <laughs> yeah. And then other people were like, slay girl. Like you're so right. Preach. And then I was reading it. But some of the people were just ruthless. Yes. They're yeah. like, you don't know anything. And I will tell you Savannah's hot take on cleansing in the morning and why you should be doing it. Okay. First of all bacteria okay accumulates while we sleep it's just like your teeth like you want to brush your teeth before you go to bed right and you need to brush them in the morning because of all that bacteria number two drooling hair oils rolling around if you don't wash your hair every single night you have hair oils okay and then your oils are on your pillow and then you're rolling over unless you sleep like literally like a zombie like that or a vampire <laughs> Like maybe you don't need to wash your face in the morning, but no, actually you still do because you have your retinoids on your night creams, all of that that needs to come off the skin. A little splishy splash is not going to remove all of that. Now, I understand when people say when I wash my face in the morning, I feel more stripped. That has nothing to do with washing your face. It has everything to do with using the wrong cleanser. And that's why the right cleanser is so important for your skin. I'm telling you, cleansing is 50% of your regimen. It can make or break your skincare routine. If you're stripping your skin before you're putting on all of these products, you're already fucked up before you even started, right? Because you're basically ruining the chances of all of that to act the way it needs to act because you damaged the skin first and you stripped it and used something that wasn't good for you. Tyler can actually speak on this. There's a cleanser um, that he used at my house that I got sent from by a brand and like literally makes him so red every single time. But sometimes he, he's used it like twice on accident. And like it just when he uses his right cleanser, he's able to use all of his actives and everything like looks good on his skin. But when he uses this one cleanser, his face gets red. He feels more irritated. He wakes up red the next day. Like it has such a big play on the rest of your routine. So cleansing is the first step. It is setting you up for success for all of your products to work properly. OK, and if you're using a stripping cleanser, yeah, it's probably better that you just wash your face in the morning. If you have dry, sensitive skin and you're not using the right cleanser, the key is finding the right cleanser for your skin type. But you should be cleansing your skin to get everything that you have off your face the night before to really get everything ready for the day. I mean, it's clean clearly face. that simple. Just yeah. have a clean face and, you know, to your regimen. So if you're more sensitive, a cream cleanser would work great for you. Look for something that's fragrance-free, no exfoliating acids, just very gentle. Cream cleanser from Is Clinical, warming honey cleanser from Is Clinical, mega purifying cleanser from Glymed, vitamin C cleanser from Glymed. Like there are so many cream cleansers and sensitive skin cleansers, cleansing gel from Skin Better, it's pH balance, like non-stripping. So that's really where it comes into play when people are like, oh, doesn't work for me. Yes, it does. You're just using the wrong cleanser. So I challenge you to not blame cleansing and blame the cleanser. I just don't understand like why they ride so hard mm -hmm. on splashing your face with water when like yeah. you could literally just use a gentle cleanser. Like why? Like I don't get it. I'm like, why, yeah, why do they care so much? Yeah, because some dermatologists say that. That's why. But why do they care so much? Like, I mean, and the dermatologist too. Like why... Why is it a bad thing to wash your face with a gentle cleanser? Or they like do they just mm -hmm. not know products well enough to know that like you can There's ding 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 ding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm just confused. Like I don't. It's and the brushing the teeth was like the perfect yeah that's like a comparison. Good example. Like would you say like oh you brush your teeth at night you don't need to brush your teeth you're in gonna the strip your enamel yeah like, like what? okay <laughs> you're gonna strip your gums <laughs> like your like, teeth are gonna no. be sensitive. Okay, then change your fucking toothpaste. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, that's. It's very strange, but yeah. people were up in arms about yeah. it. I mean, it's just weird to me that people don't cleanse their face, but go off. Like, do you? And like, if you're an esthetician and you also don't think that you should cleanse your face in the morning. You're wrong. <laughs> okay. But there's also some estheticians that don't believe in SPF. So like, that is true. Yeah. And not everything I say is gospel, but like, this is my podcast and my beliefs. And so like, if you don't agree with them, like, that's fine. But like, this is what I believe in. I mean, I have success in clearing skin and sensitive skin, all kinds of skin. So, like, you know, 
Speak your truth. Speak my truth. And that's how I feel. And if you don't believe me, that's fine. But I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another hot Wise take. Words. I'm going to get that tattooed. If you don't believe me, that's fine. But I'm right. Get it on your gravestone. <laughs> okay. Deal. I feel like everyone that thought I was wrong, you're wrong. Um, but yeah, it is hard in the industry with the divide with dermatology and things like that. But I mean, they really don't take the time to understand products. And I feel like, you know, there's some that do. There's some dermatologists that are great at it. Um, but a lot of them are sellouts and there's a lot of estheticians that are sellouts. Like I just had to pay my taxes and I was like, damn, I'm about to like take a Neutrogena deal. Like, yeah, for real. No, I'm not for even kidding. No. That's literally what I said when I saw how much I owed in taxes this year. I was like, where's that Neutrogena deal that they wanted me to do? Yeah. Um, but I get it. Like get your money, get your coin. That's fine. Like I don't shame anyone that does deals with brands like that. Like go off, like do you, but that's not me. Like I always, my community that I built is so important to me and I can never be bought. And like, yes, I might not make as much money because I'm not doing these big brand deals, but actually I think I will make more money in the long run because people trust my recommendations and I'm not like, just like recommend, like if I literally was like, I love this Neutrogena face wash, people would think it was April fool's day or I had like a gun to my head <laughs> or like, held hostage. yeah, like yeah. my followers would be so fucking confused. I'd be like, what? Is Savannah okay? No, for real. Like, did something go down? Like, did she, like, go bankrupt? Like, why yeah. is she doing this, you know? And that's why you're successful, because ethical and results-driven aesthetics is yeah. literally your fucking motto. And mm-hmm. that's why people trust you. Yes. Yeah, and I honestly really only recommend Skin Better because it's great. Like, I feel like I, at this point, people probably think, like, I'm in bed with someone that works there <laughs> yeah. or, like... Uh, they're like slipping me like an envelope under the table, but they're really not like I just love them. And like they were they give me opportunities because I've rode so hard for their brand. And because of my influence, I've helped them open so many accounts and help spread spread their brand name. And now like more people have skin better because I use skin better. And like so, of course, they're going to like, you know, invite me to cool stuff because I worked hard for it, you know, but I love them because I love them and they're the best. Like and if they weren't, I wouldn't post about it. So. Okay, another hot take. We're going to talk about retinol and pregnancy. And this is a hot, hot, hot take. So you might want to turn on your AC, you guys, and get a nice glass of cold water because it's about to get steamy up in here. Okay, retinol and pregnancy. I used it the entire time I was pregnant. And I will never tell you to do this. You always need to talk to your doctor, your OBGYN, get clearance, have them tell you it's okay. But the reason I personally did it is because of my education and the literature and studying and knowing about ingredients, okay? Skincare cannot absorb into the bloodstream like you think it is. Our skin is not a sponge. It's meant to protect us, literally. It's meant to keep things out, right? That's why we have skin on our body. It's to protect our muscles, protect everything that's going on inside. So if things could penetrate easily, Like, we'd all look so young forever. (laughs) Like, gosh, like, it'd be great. Like, it'd be in our bloodstream. It's not. And if anything does get in the bloodstream, it is so minuscule, guys. So tiny. It doesn't affect it. One. Number two. This is why delivery systems and skincare, this is a side tangent, are so important. Because our skin is not a sponge, it is so hard to get delivery systems into the skin. And that's why I love Skin Better and their interfuse technology is because it actually bypasses that epidermis to get and drive these big molecules that usually would just sit on top of the skin into the dermis to actually work on the function of the skin deeper. So that's my side thing. But with retinoids, you guys, when there's a study that says you can't use retinol or pregnancy, it's going to cause birth defects, it's not safe, it's on isotretinoin, okay? That's an oral vitamin A. And when they did this study, which we all know with Accutane, like you have to get tested, you have to get your blood drawn, you have to do it. Tyler was on Accutane. He can tell you, obviously, they weren't testing you for pregnancy because you don't have a uterus, but. I was on Accutane for like a month. No way. Yeah. I was really, it was, I was like 15 and yeah. my acne wasn't even that bad. But um, you, I think you literally have to sign something that no, says like you. have to like sign you, something. Like, you have to use di- three or two different forms of contraception that you yeah. have to agree to use. So like for girls, it'd be like birth control and condoms. Yeah. Or like and for I was a guy, like, you'd be like abstinence. And yeah. like, like you have to like, no, I'm not joking. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I'm like 14. Um, And yeah, it was like a big deal. But then I was only on it for like a month or so. And then my mom was like, this can make you suicidal. We got to take <laughs> you off. I'm nervous. And so then I got off. So it was yeah. like such a short amount of time. Yeah. But, but yeah, you have to get monthly blood work done. Yeah. You have to like do all Scary. this Scary. 
Because it's so like because so what it does intense. is it literally dries all the oils out of your face and your body, and no, so your whole body. So it literally like obliterate the the fetus, you know, <laughs> like it would literally suck that fetus dry. Um, and so that's what the study is on. And so at that time, they're like, well, we're just going to say all retinol, all retinoids, everything, whether like it's vitamin A, vitamin A, vi- yeah. any kind of vitamin A, topical, yeah. oral, no. And so it's an umbrella statement. So truly, it was never tested topically. No one has ever topically tested retinoids on a pregnant woman. And why would they? Liability, lawsuit. The second something goes wrong with someone's kid, they start pointing fingers at what it could be. Yeah, and nobody wants to get sued. Pregnant woman. No one's going to test on a pregnant woman. No one's yeah. stupid enough to test on a pregnant woman. Yeah. Like, that's like the worst person you could test on. <laughs> and people, yeah. literally, when it comes to their kids, they're mama bears. They will freaking sue you for everything you have. And that is why... I, Savannah Boda, am not telling you to use <laughs> retinol during pregnancy, and I stand by that message, but I did, and this is why. So, number one was that only tested on oral, which is obviously like 10,000 times stronger than anything that is being put on top of the skin because that's being ingested, okay? Number two, the amount of vitamin A that's found in our prenatals is so much higher than could ever be topically absorbed into our bloodstream from a topical retinoid, you guys. Like, literally, look at the back of your prenatals and look how much vitamin A is in there. Like, you're getting more vitamin A from your prenatal, which is good for the baby, than you are from wearing a freaking retinoid cream that is not penetrating your bloodstream. So that's number two. And yeah, that's why I did. Cyrus is fine and healthy and great and wonderful and I did it during breastfeeding as well and, you know, to each their own. I will say the only thing, though, about using retinoids during pregnancy is your skin is more sensitive and more sun sensitive. Oh, my God. When I went to Mexico, I always been very fair. I burn easily, very, very easily. But when I was pregnant, (laughs) it was like times 10, okay? Like my skin was so much more sensitive. So that is the one thing is you are more sensitive and reactive to more exfoliating ingredients when you're pregnant. So that's something to be mindful of. But as for it harming your baby, I personally don't believe that it does. Um, But again, do your research and, you know, always ask your OBGYN. Mine, I asked. She said she was fine with it. Did not care. Was happy. So that is my hot take on retinoids and pregnancy. I don't think I can contribute to. I second everything that you just said. (laughs) I feel supported by you both. Thank you. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Yeah. 100%. It's just logical thinking. And I get it. Like, no one wants, and I mean, if you want to be safe, like, just don't do it. It's nine months. Like, it's literally such a short amount of time. Like, just don't, don't use it. If you have any kind of fear, like, your baby is more important than your freaking skin. Okay. So, like, that's the other thing, too, is like, if you're not comfortable, like, don't fucking do it. Just use glycolic acid instead. I love active serum from Is Clinical. It's great. That's what I recommend to my patients who don't want to use retinoids during pregnancy. Like no one's making you do it. Don't do it. If you have any kind of slight feeling of being uncomfortable or just not even wanting to risk it, like don't risk it. I'm in the industry. So I, you know, obviously know things a little bit more and have more insight on that. And so that's why I felt comfortable, but you got to do what's best for you and your baby. And again, it's nine months. So like to each their own each their own yeah and like i don't like it's not like you were like reckless and like you like just don't like you didn't get botox you didn't do a mm-hmm. lot of things throughout your pregnancy but like yeah. this is the one thing that like, i was like through your research yeah. yeah well i mean like and your i knew research. too yeah, yeah. Exactly. i knew so. that i was fine and i knew he was fine and i just you know it's just sad that people make fear-mongering umbrella statements like i really wish they would study on me for my next kid you know yeah, you <laughs> you'll say, be I the volunteer. first one like vol- take me volunteer as tribute yeah. yeah for real I would I would take one for the team because I really think you know it's just sad that a lot of people are so scared of it you know but again do what you gotta do okay guys I have more hot takes but we ran out of time for this episode so we're gonna do part two next Monday I hope you guys enjoyed this and um please wash your face tomorrow morning <laughs> If you need a gentle <laughs> cleanser, I gave you some good recommendations. Come yeah, stop by SCA, cleansing gel. Pick one up. Cleansing gel. I, I like. I think not a single person could react or have bad reaction to cleansing gel. To cleansing gel. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe like the vitamin C cleanser, like stuff. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe. But yeah. like, cleansing gel. Literally, you. It's you the use cleansing gel on Cyrus. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like literally, anyone can use cleansing gel from Skin Butter. Yeah, it's great. We love it. Ten out of ten. But we'll see you guys next week. We love you. Bye. Bye.